Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to this particular session, which is going to be on the topic called Assessment Methods, Matrices of Post-Harvest Losses Measurement. My name is Ashok Gulati. I'm the Infosys Chair Professor in a think tank in India, former chairman of the Prices Commission in India, and 10 years with IFPRI on a number of issues related to agriculture. We heard in the morning a lot, and the sessions followed, one-third losses or waste, and what to do from the farmer all the way in the value chain up to the consumer. We have a big challenge and partnership, coalition, and how best technologies can be adopted at the farmer level or all along uh, the other stakeholders in the game. The keynote speaker for this particular session is Dr. Twang Timmermans, who is the program manager of sustainable food chains at the Research Institute Food and Bio-Based Research from Wageningen University. And one of the interesting things that he has been doing is he's the co coordinator of the EU FP7 project, Fusions. I asked him, what is this? He said, wait. And he's going to unravel some mystery on fusion and what he's doing. Welcome. Fine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the kind introduction. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. It will be always a challenging task after lunch, so I hope uh, to keep you all awake and inspire you a little bit. I'm a little bit, I'm not strange to the topic, but maybe a little bit the strange aspects to the discussions here. Since all of this two days, three days, has been dedicated working towards uh, food losses and waste reduction strategies in, in developing and emerging countries. My area of work mostly is in Europe. Um, and I hope some of the aspects in developing solutions, setting up structures, really combining actions toward the coherent strategy inspire some of you and see that some of these elements of these approaches might be applicable also to other, com other countries and also other regions. In the second part of my uh, introductory, I will give also some insights on what we do as, as Wageningen University also in emerging and developing countries on the topic of food losses and waste uh, uh, reduction. Why is there interesting links probably to be made? Um, it has been mentioned also this, this morning and this afternoon. Uh, the topic is relatively new on the agenda. In Europe, we mostly address to it as food waste, food waste strategies, food waste reduction, because the focus is more on the retail and the consumer level. But still, in all approaches, we look farm to fork, post-harvest up to the consumer, including, including waste management. I've been working on the topic since the early 2000s. In the beginning, there was not so many people interested in this topic from the scientific perspective, but also from civil society, governments, and industry. Yes, there were, industry was interested when there was money to be made, but for the rest, the topic was of less relevance to many, many people. That changed in 2005 and especially in 2008, uh, when there was no longer certainty about what would be the prices for the long term for commodities because of the price peak. From that, 2009, 2010, the topic has been on the agenda in Europe and in most of the countries in Europe. get this work. We started to work on this topic very early 2000 and I think it is important also as an, as an research university, working university, you need to define your own vision and strategy on this on a so relevant topic as food losses and waste reduction. So we, so we did. We've been very successful and that's coming back in many of the aspects that I would like to show today in how to organize multi-stakeholder processes to make sure that on a complex societal topic as food losses and waste reduction is, you need to uh, incorporate in, in your model and your approaches all the actors. We call that the Dutch diamond approach or the diamond <coughs> approach, making sure that governments, industry, research institutions, civil societies and NGOs are part of the program, part of the strategy and also part of the action. We've heard this morning before, and it's important to stress, 
food losses and waste is either a problem that you can discuss about it, but it is also an aspect of showing how well a food system is functioning. And you should, should keep both of these aspects in the back of my head also and think why are we working on this topic and why is this group of people working on this topic growing so quickly. On the global context, the topic is all put also put, 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 should be put in the context of uh, a, a sustainable food system. So making sure that for the long term we have a nutritional sustainable food system. While in Europe, the main driver for why the topic of food waste is on the agenda is resource efficiency and the development of transitions towards a circular economy. So that would put some different approaches and some different uh, attention to, to points, but basically the concept and are, are more or less the same. There's a lot to be said about data and the impacts of food losses on waste. You all know these figures from the famous FAO report published in 2000. Uh, 11 and also the impact assess assessments being done on it. We know that the impact on greenhouse gases, on water use, and all type of other environmental aspect aspects are huge. Uh, we also know there's a lot of questions about where's the volumes across the different parts of the supply chain. But we see that on an average in consumption and in agriculture, the, most of the impact, most of the, the, <coughs> the, the, the parts of the supply chain where the losses and the waste take place. But there is no part of the supply chain that doesn't affect this part, this, this aspect. Many people express food losses and waste in kilogram, while at the end, what is food meant for? That's the nutritional values and the kilocalories. This is not a new perspective. This perspective has been shown many, many times based on data in the early, early 90s, but it's very important if you see what are we actually working on is the availability of nutrients and calories value for human consumption. And at the moment, we produce sufficient calories to feed 12 to 14 billion people in the world. That's also something you have to take into consideration when designing strategies, what is really the urgency and what are the drivers, why such a system has been developed and where, where are the places where the food losses and waste take place, but also what are the other solutions for the surplus of food being produced. And understanding that half of the, uh, the biomass that, has been, that will be produced will be used for animal feed at the moment explains also why this is a very important sector that we should not forget in the scoping. And there's a third new part being introduced and that's the bio-waste economy. Understanding that there will be more biomass going into biomaterials, biofuels in the future. So we have to understand its full complexity. Talking about data, we are in the session talking mostly about measurement, assessment, etc. Europe is also a developing country in this aspect. We don't know. We have an estimate based on data, the first report being published in 2010 by the uh, Biointelligence uh, Institute uh, being ordered by the European Commission. But looking back at the data and the details, we know it's really a rough estimate of these data. There's very limited member states that have actual reliable data on food waste, and that is still the case. Because of that, and because of the Dutch government, so I'm going to zoom into one specific member state that I know most of that since I, I lived there, and since we do the work mostly for the government. Also for the Dutch government, in 2009, food waste reduction came a priority uh, instrument. It was both on food loss and waste prevention. We had two years discussion on defining it. What is it what we did really talk about? How do we organize a stakeholder platform that agrees on the basic framework on how to assess food losses and waste at a harmonized manner? And that's what we introduced. In this, inter in, in this, this model, it was very important to stress that for the food industry, the focus was mostly in the nutritional value and the avoidable part of food waste and the potentially avoidable part. And it's very important, I will show later on in, in examples, it is only food waste when you know the destination. It's only losses when you know the destination. And it's very important that whatever framework you will be using is to get this data right before you have the more emotional discussion about what is the definition for food losses and waste. Because it will take a long term before we all will agree on that. But there are some basic definitions. Let's use that as a reference and start building the framework and filling it with data. This is a little bit of an inconvenient truth for the Netherlands because we have been 
reporting food waste figures for five years in a row now. And though there has been an objective of re reducing with 20% in 2015, we see the figures not going down yet. There's hundreds of initiatives, but at the national level, we see that these in in initiatives don't have sufficient impact yet. That also is probably the reason why you need long-term strategies. You won't see any instant reduction at larger scale, though at the local level, the smaller level, you might see huge impacts and reductions of food waste. You have to be beware, beware of that, and that also means you need a lot of it in initiatives and at the time bring them together in a coherent strategy. We hope we are at the tipping point of, and, and that it will go down because of the lots of initiatives, the lots of campaigns, the industry being really act, active in that, but we don't know for sure because these are objective data that we get from all different public and private sources. I already said it's important to look also at the valorization because if you put it to landfill or to the sewer, it's completely different than adding it to animal feed. If you want to calculate impacts of food losses and waste, this is what you need to know. Also, expressing, for example, in what is the value of such a, such a site stream. I always call it resources because after you call it losses or waste, you're gone. Call it a resource because it is a resource and think circular, circular economy perspective. You see the prices, but you also see the ranges. It ranges a lot depending on availability, depending on a lot of, of different circumstances. So what is currently going to AD might be going to the animal feed the year afterwards or maybe even lower being incinerated based on all types of different circumstances. What's the infrastructure? What's the subsidy climate? What are the companies really interested in and what's the alternative? You have to be beware of that. Because of the importance of the topic on the European scale, um, I took the initiative in 2010 to look for and build a pan-European network of scientists and institutions relevant uh, to, to getting insight and understanding, but also developing solutions for the problem. That was the start of the project called Fusions. And Fusions, as a, as a project, is a Framework 7 project, so it's based on a tender process by the European Commission. Uh, and it's, it's uh, a four-year running program with the objective of uh, getting the basics right and understanding the, the main drivers, setting up multi-stakeholder uh, networks with a significant contribution to the ambition of 50% avoidable food waste reduction in 2025 and 2020, because that was the, and is still the target that the European Commission has. Doing that by getting the, the people together in Europe that were mostly focusing on local solution, national level, sometimes regional level, and getting all their companies together in one platform and in one uh, partnership. Designing an approach on what would be at that time, 2010, the best approach to really go and solve and to build strategies to solve food losses and waste reduction in Europe. Um, if I have, would have to do it again today, I would probably use the same structure because it really works in this way. The first thing, what is really important, getting the basics right. What are you talking about? What is the definitions? What's the framework to measure? What are the main drivers for food waste? And develop a manner, a methodology that supports member states, companies, NGOs to start reporting on a more harmonized manner about food losses and waste. Getting a multi-stakeholder platform together. Getting people that are committed to this topic and to the solutions and bring them together to talk about the relevant issues and topics and do that also looking at different cultural situations. Because in Mediterranean areas where we are here, the topic has completely different drivers and angles than for example, if you look in Scandinavia. So also within Europe, the topic is very diffused and different. Showing how you can contribute to solutions. We have chosen the social innovative approach, looking at bottom-up initiatives, mainly of young people who say, we want to do something about it, and we take the in initiative and show that it works. By bringing all these together and showing by example, you develop good best practices and spread a network that will have impact on the short term. Of course, there's more angles to innovation, so there's other things that need to be worked on in the future. Engagement, it's about awareness of, of also consumers. So we did a lot of work on creating awareness of consumers at the European level. We started in 2010 in the, the more aware regions like Northwestern Europe, in the UK, in, in, uh, in the Netherlands, in France, etc. 
And now we are more working on the sites of Europe. Uh, we did our events in Prague last, last week and three weeks ago in Budapest, in Athens, etc. Making sure that whatever you can do is contribute to more creating awareness. And the first time you do such a big event, you, you get huge media coverage and you get huge attention from people on the topic. That doesn't mean that they're engaged yet to, to contribute to solutions, but it's a very important step. And the last thing is, in this case, to give recommendation on policy, because the policy context is crucial at the European level, at the national level, because there is also some kinds, because there's so many policy areas involved in this topic, if you look at it in a more systemic way, if you don't bring it together and show all the different drivers and insights and come up with recommendations, you have some wrong incentives in the system that you need for the long term to get, to get out, to get these perverse uh, incentives out of the system. Get all the people together. At the moment, we have 180 organizations that work with us. And work with us will, because they are essential in our consultation with stakeholders. So we, we, we are not there to organize just conference and make them listen to our what we found. But it is really about interactive. It's really about consultation. It is about really bringing questions to them and getting them back in our, in our work. Essential thing in our work is to develop a framework so that anybody can understand what we really talk about. What is the scope of food losses and waste that we talk about through the whole supply chain from primary production up to consumption and waste? What is excluded from the scope? For example, directly going to animal feed or uh, bio-based economy. And in all steps, there could be secondary resources, as I would like to, to call them. And you need to find out to what destination you will go. This is a universal framework that can be applied to any supply chains or whatever level you want to look at, supply chain level, at regional level, national level, global uh, level. And that helps a lot in getting discussions right on what are we really, really talking about. What we needed to do in Fusions, because Fusions is in contract with the European Commission, we needed to define what the, our definition of food waste was. So we came up with this part. So everything going to composting, AD, et cetera, et cetera, we call food waste. If you go to send it to animal feed or bio-based high value uh, applications, we don't call it food waste. To be honest, I would have preferred if we didn't have to bring forward the definition. So that's one of the things I've learned. The framework is more important than the definition. Though on the other hand, if you don't have a definition, how can you monitor progress? So that's a tricky thing. We have done it in this way, uh, and it, it, it worked. In the last year, we tried to get the data from all the member states. This is what we got. This is what we have at the moment after one year of working with all of the member states, with the statistical office, the people involved in uh, collecting data for food losses, food losses and waste. Um, green is data for reliable uh, quality. Yellow is unreliable but useful, and red is nothing. So that means only a quarter is filled on a level that's acceptable to us. That means three quarters of member states in Europe don't report, are not able to report about the levels of food losses and waste that we have. This is sufficiently to say how much food waste we have in Europe, but of course it's not sufficiently for any member states. <coughs> okay, I want to monitor, they need to work, and they need to continue work on having on a structural basis the data for food losses and waste being, uh, being determined. But it's sufficient to set a, baseli to set a baseline for Europe. Uh, the outcome, and it will be presented next, uh, next week at the conference in, in Milano, will be that in Europe we have about 100 million tons of food waste, and that's including edible and non-edible associated parts of, uh, of food. And about 40% can be directly attributed to consumer behavior aspects. So 45% of food waste is at consumer level. We're the first to include also data about primary sector in, uh, in Europe, and we know, which you can also see that here, there's only three countries reporting on a reliable way on data at the primary sector level. There's the largest data gap and the challenge that we have for the future. Next step will be, and we have developed a manual to support member states to set up structures to monitor in an effective way, efficient way, the levels of food waste. We're going to pilot that 
uh, in November this year with some of the selected member states, and hopefully there will be a structure being set in most of the member states. But we're depending there also on the strategy of member states and the policy at the European level. We don't know what will be in the circular economy package that will be published in December of this year. So we are waiting and hoping that at least the minimal thing that I hope there will be in there is to oblige member states to start reporting in 2017 or 2018. And this will help them to prepare that. Probably you're also aware of the global initiative to develop a food losses and waste protocol. This is being coordinated by the World Resources Institute with lots of other organizations to develop such a global protocol. As a multi-stakeholder effort to develop the global food loss and waste protocol as an accounting and a reporting standard to quantify the amount of food as well as associated edible parts removed from the food supply chain. If you look at the definition and what it says, it's, it, it's a lot the same as the approach used in, uh, in uh, fusion. It's called food losses and waste because we don't want to distinguish there between what is food loss or waste because I think it's arbitrary what you call it. Uh, there you come close to the principles and the definition of questions. It's important to see it as a, as a resource again. This is the group doing that, uh, that, that work. Uh, this is a steering committee and you recognize some of the organizations probably. It's a combination of uh, public and private partners and knowledge institutes that have the most of the body of knowledge on this, this area, so that's REF and Fusion. That's why I'm in the steering committee. They're supported by technical working groups and the external review committees and pilot testing. Is there a difference between Fusions and WRI? Yes, a little bit, but 95% is the same. Fusions is focused to Europe and to member states reporting, uh, so government agencies, and for the rest it's very comparable. It's both voluntary and it's giving guidance and support to start using this type of manuals and frameworks for harmonized measurement of uh, and assessment of food losses and waste. Now moving to more solutions. What I'm very pleased of is what the work that we've done on social innovation in Fusion. Um, we set out a tender for best ideas for uh, social in in approaches that we would support in our, in our uh, uh, project. Uh, we, we found that there's over 300 initiatives across Europe and six of them we supported additionally because we think they can be more impactful because they can be translated uh, to, to, uh, and, and being uh, uh, replicated in other parts of Europe. These are the ones. Uh, let me take out a few. Uh, this, is, this is one that's definitely growing across the European scale. It's been coordinated by, uh, by feedback the organization that some of you probably know and that's being headed by, uh, by Tristan Stewart. And really we see now that there is a European network being set up, uh, also active already in France, Belgium, Spain, Portugal, Greece, on helping in social innovative way to get products that would normally not be harvested, to get them off the field and make sure that they will be put somewhere on the market or will be given to char charity. Given pro supporting by protocols, enthusiasm, how to organize, and this really has grown up to European scale. This one, in the beginning, to be honest, I thought like education is a crucial thing, but we cannot do nothing within the course of fusions in four years. I was completely wrong. This project has been very impactful, and it really showed that young people, children, in this case youngsters four to five years old, the kindergarten level, can help to educate us as a, as a lost generation. Because these young children can really help us, can really help us to value food, to start a discussion on the table in a very playful manner. So all type of education material has been, uh, has been developed. And what it really showed is that children start discussion with their parents, with the social community, and it's really proven to be helpful. So we definitely want to take this, this type of work further. Uh, and for me, the most important lesson is, yes, education is important, we all know that, but yes, it can also be impactful if you start <coughs> working on that, also for the shorter term. But of course, you have to think long term in the back of your head. Fusions will end next year, in July, but we're not finished. 
So I'm very pleased that we already have a new project being started in July this year, that's called Refresh, and that is bringing the work of Fusions further. And what it brings further is that we're now going to work at what, what we call frameworks per action at member state level to get multi-stakeholders really together, committed, backed by governments to start acting on reducing food losses and waste. So this new project and multi-stakeholder platform has been started just a couple of months ago. It's four years running with 26 partners. Of two of them are in China, so we also will work on setting up such a platform in China. This is really, really exciting since it will do new type of research, for example, on consumer insight, where not so much research has been done. It will work on new valorization routes, but the most important will be the framework for action. How do you get stakeholders committed, working together to solve and to contribute to the reduction of food losses and waste? In a local model, but it's very important to get the learnings from all types of different platforms here together. I won't tell about the details, but if you want to do it in Europe, it's a competition. So you need to have a strong strategy, a strong vision, because otherwise you don't have the project. This project was selected from 70 other projects that also had a very good proposal. But I'm very pleased that we are one, and in this case the winner takes it all uh, in, this, uh, in this evaluation process. Do I need to stop? <laughs> or I have a couple of more slides, but uh, it's up to you. Uh, I think we should give them a chance to ask you some questions if possible. Yeah, let me do it very quickly. What's important part of, of, uh, of Refresh is that we work with five pilot countries to set these frameworks for action. One of them is the Netherlands, where we've already started, Germany, Hungary, Spain, and China. So th these are the five countries we, we will work dedicatedly to uh, setting up the such framework. To show you what is done, there's, all, there's so much innovation already being done, but what this platform will definitely contribute is supply chain collaboration, because that's the essential thing. It's all behavior related, and, it's a, a, and you can only change it by looking at the supply chain concept, showing what's the potential of, of a solution, for example, improved packaging, showing them what it will mean on the supply chain level, and showing that actually cost can be reduced and profit can be made if you all do it together. These type of decision support models, bringing together all type of knowledge of the 15 years of work that we have done on this, but also other, other uh, uh, research organizations and, and, and businesses, is brought together in these type, of, uh, these type of models. Making sure that new technology, I'm an engineer, so I love technology, but I know technology is only a very small part of the solution because technology is not the limiting factor at the moment, but technology can help to bring solutions further. For example, ICT, big data, etc. But also shelf life extension, working on new product portfolio. I will conclude by making a link to the topic that we are discussing here to today, or this, this week. I see Jane already laughing in the back. Jane Ambuko. Stand up, Jane. She, we, we were both in this team producing this document. Who has, who has seen this document? Ah. There were some copies available at the FAO stand, but uh, it's downloadable. But I think it is the first attempt to really bring the topic on a systemic level together. Um, based on meta studies, so it's not new research, but bringing all the insights together, working in a really international pan global team from uh, Jane from the University of Nairobi in Kenya, but also from China, from, uh, from India, from Brazil, and really bringing this uh, to the first, let's say, recommendation report to address the topic at, I will skip those showing that we also do a lot of work in, uh, at Wageningen in, in, in other countries. And conclude with this, showing the importance to work at the different levels. We've seen and we know there are so many micro-level solutions. We also saw <coughs> from meetings in, and conferences in other places in the world, there are so many good ideas, but how to bring them to impact, that can only be done if you work on these three levels. I think it's essential that this, this, this conference, it is agreed, that these three levels are important and that the, 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 the collaboration at the macro and the meso level needs to be happening now. We should not waste this opportunity. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. If there are any questions,
we can accommodate two or three questions quickly. Yes, please. Identify yourself and uh, please stand up. Yeah, let me first comment on your first topic. Yes, it's important to work, and that's, that's my role, is to bring expertise together and to bring stakeholders together. Um, from the institute where I work on, we, we know everything about post-harvest losses and packaging, etc. but it's important to bring in the social sciences, so that's what we did. Also, technology areas, design uh, and marketing aspect. So the reason why we have won the bid for reset, refresh is because we brought all this expertise together. For a coordinator, that is my responsibility. This is a huge task because we have now the challenge of making people from different backgrounds talking the same language. That's, 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 that's crucial because otherwise you cannot contribute. But innovation always takes place in a combination of multiple expertise. Otherwise you don't have innovations and we need the innovation here. There was one more question on that side, otherwise we move on to the next. Yes, please. Yes. Personally, I don't like the term waste, um, but at the moment, in, 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 to be able to have it in Europe on the agenda, you need to talk about waste. Because if you talk about food use and the positive aspects, nobody is interested because they would say there's no problem there, but there is a waste problem. So that's, that's a challenge for us. What I hope we can do also with Fusions and Refresh is to make sure that people see it as a resource. Whatever, the edible, the inedible part is both a, is both a resource. As long as you get away from landfill, because there you don't have a lot of resources, of course. So, but make new steps, next steps on the ladder. For me, it would be a challenge, and hopefully we can all contribute to that, is not to talk about food losses and waste, but to make a more positive term. That's what also we, we see if you want to have consumers or any organization involved in your actions, make a positive message. And I think, but that's, that's, that's challenging. I think if we, we should not waste this opportunity. That means we should not focus on figures. We should not focus on the amounts of food waste because journalists love it. And there are still also here in the room people who, will, who would like to put things on the agenda and make the problem bigger than it is. I hate statements like 50% of food is wasted because that's not true. That's definitely not true. These figures are different. So let's talk a more positive language on a harmonized way, and I fully agree with you. Let's get away from waste, see it as a resource, and think circular. Thank you very much. So kind. <laughs> I'm told this one-third figure of food loss or waste was there in the policy paper, and then it was taken out because of perhaps your suggestion. <laughs> OK.